What's up, running fam? On this edition of Talks with Tip Top, I'm chatting with Cleveland runner Megan Tomlinson. Megan shares with us her love for Brooks running shoes, how her run group actually reached out to her to join them, as well as a detailed look into her rehab post-hip surgery. I hope you enjoy our chat as much as I did. Okay, Megan, thank you for joining me today. Sorry for the crazy construction truck that just pulled up. Uh, how are things in uh, Ohio? Pretty good. We've had some pretty good weather lately, so thankful for that. Well, uh, you're an RN, so I want to thank you for everything that you've been doing. Uh, I guess we could, I guess, talk a little bit about things that have been going on, how things have been in the hospital for you, work situation like. I'm pretty crazy. I'm actually on a COVID unit, so um, some adjustments to like life in general, um, like deciding who I can see, who I can't see, things like that. But um, the hospital system I work for is being really good with their employees and giving us like space to decompress and things like that so good i'm glad they're taking care of you um we're getting the meat, meat and potatoes here um well, i guess not really so much meat because you're a vegetarian right true yep you just made did you just make the switch this year and i guess was that like uh, something that you had been mulling over for a while uh i thought about it like on and off but then I was like there's no way I could never eat Chick-fil-A again um but then I watched Game Changers on Netflix in January and that night I was like okay I'm done um so it's been about seven months now of being vegetarian hey how, how's it how's it going you feel great like nothing like um I mean, I feel fantastic. I know that I can't say it's because of vegetarianism or just like overall changes in my life, but ever since I went vegetarian, I've had so much more energy and I like, I don't have trouble really falling asleep anymore. And I've shaved at least like 30 seconds off of my like regular paces, not to mention my speed workouts. So feeling really good overall. Very nice. Yeah. It's, especially, yeah. When you get to sleep and you're, yeah in your pace a little quicker that's yeah those are big benefits there mm -hmm. um how do you uh everybody needs protein how do you how do you get that what do you what do you what are you usually consuming for protein so usually during the day i have like quinoa rice beans just like your regular protein sources i haven't really found it difficult to like get the protein that i need because the only thing that i really ate that contributed was chicken before so if I, like, at the end of the day feel like I need a little bit more, I do drink a vegan protein shake. Okay, cool. Um, your running journey, or fitness journey, I guess, as a whole, like, how did that kind of start for you? Were you, like, running in, like, middle school and high school, or was it something that kind of came on a little bit later in your life? So my best friend made me join the cross-country team sophomore year of high school. And I was the slowest person on the team, and I hated every second of it. And um, somehow it kind of stuck. I was like, wow, this sucks so bad that I think I'm just going to try and make it not suck anymore. So when I got to college, I lived across the street from the campus rec center, and I would just go like run on the treadmill, and like we had an indoor track. And then I met my current boyfriend who speed walks half marathons. And he was like, you should do a half marathon. And I'm like, uh, probably not. But then I saw like how cool the environment was. And so I got serious about it. So my first half marathon was in 2017. And that was the Cleveland Marathon. And I've been taking it pretty seriously ever since then. So it's been about four years. Do you remember your first race? Like you're like in high school. Like you were like, you hated it. You oh know? yeah, it was you, horrible. You remember <laughs> I remember my first 5K and I was like, this can't be real. Like people <laughs> do this like all the time and I can't believe it. Um, my goal for the cross country season was to run a 29.59 5K and I did it during my last race. So yeah, since then I shaved like six-ish minutes off, but with all this craziness going on, I haven't really gone out to try that so have you uh i guess yeah with all this craziness is there like some kind of goal or something or are you just like oh, i'm just gonna rank rank up the miles every month 
Well, I'm doing the great virtual race across Tennessee. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but uh, there's a lot of us out there doing it. Um, I think there's like 18,000 people who are currently running this thing. And it's basically just a race that is the distance from one, like the east to the west of Tennessee. And it's about 630 miles. And you have from, I want to say, July, no, I saw it was like the beginning of the summer to the end of the summer. So um, I still have about 160 miles left to go. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. Um, well, I mean, I guess you're no stranger to like a kind of, uh, I don't know what the, like an endurance distance run, kind of like that. Cause you did the like Yeti trail runners, like you had to run, what was it so many miles in like 24 hours and some challenge or something? Yeah, it was five miles every four hours for 24 hours. And I did it with, um, there's a big group of us on Instagram who all like kind of made a group chat and we all did it together and they live all over the country. And then I also convinced two people here in Cleveland to do it too. So I don't think I could have done that alone, but I don't regret that. That was one of the most incredible running experiences I've ever had. Would you do it again? Um, maybe, maybe next year. I'm not really ready for anything crazy like that again this year. But now, was that just like you're gonna like just run freely on your own and around like neighborhoods and yeah. trails, or okay? Yeah. So I tried because it was I think six runs. So I hit a different location for each one just to refresh the scenery. What'd you do to like? Did you like? Because it's not like you can be like, okay, I'm gonna like really sit down and dive into my stretching or foam rolling afterward. <laughs> what did you do in between the runs? Um, in between, I usually would come home and immediately like use my hypervolt or stretch, um, eat like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a protein shake or something like that, and then uh, go to sleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Just nap it off. And, yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess like this year, or is it, I think last year you had run uh, like a mile for every like um, year that you were born. So like, was it 22? Yep. So I did that this year. That was something. Um, I decided to split it that day into two 11 mile runs um, because I had so much like support and people who wanted to do it with me. But I know that not everyone wanted to wake up at five in the morning. So I did 11 with a group of people who all ran it with me at 5 a.m. And then at 6 p.m. I had a couple people bike with me and a couple people run with me. Wow, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's nice you have the support group to do that. And especially, yeah, now with everything that's kind of happening, it's been kind of cool to see people like running around and fulfilling those marathons or half marathons that they originally signed up for. Yeah, uh, I ended up doing... Um, two virtual half marathons and then I did one virtual like one mile race which was last weekend. How do you like the virtual setup? I've never done one before. Um, I liked the first one because it was kind of just like it I feel like it really strengthened like the mental part of the run like there's nobody around let's see what I can do without all that support and I did pretty well um, I don't consider it a PR, even though it would have been, just because I didn't have that whole experience. But um, after the first one, I wasn't a fan of really the rest of them. How many, uh, how many halves, how many marathons have you done, like, in total? And I guess is there one that just really sticks out to you as always that, as a memorable one? Um, I have done five in person and two of the virtual half marathons. My favorite one ever is the um, Indianapolis Monumental. It was incredible. Does that take you like just all over the city of Indianapolis? And I had never been there. And a lot of people were like, why are you going all the way to Indianapolis to run? Like, it's nothing special. And I got there and I'm like, this is actually really a nice city. And it reminded me a lot of Cleveland too. Because um, they have a lot of historic homes there. And their downtown is like, it's not you know anything huge but like I kind of like that smaller city vibe stuff is there a city at all that you would love to uh, like just run run around it can be a race doesn't have to be a race if you're just like oh I've always wanted to go there and maybe like run that city 
if I could take all the people away, I would go to New York City and run. Um, I've been there, and I really enjoyed the city, but I couldn't imagine running around all those people. <laughs> yeah, it's always funny, like, yeah, whenever I see or follow somebody who's running around New York, I'm like, how are you, how are you doing that? <laughs> right. Where are all the people? <laughs> right. Um, well, being in Cleveland, you deal with a lot of weather, a lot of mixed weather. Mm-hmm. Running in the wintertime. I know we're in like, you know, the dead of summer right now, but running in the winter, you love it, you hate it. Um, so funny enough, uh, this was the first, like last winter was the first winter I was not injured ever over the winter. So I don't really like love it, but once you get into these like hundred degree temperatures, you kind of miss it. So, um, I mean, the snow gets kind of crazy here, but we, um, I invested in like the yak tracks and I got some like trail shoes if it's really snowy here. Otherwise I might just hit the treadmill. Okay. Are you a fan of the treadmill at all? Or are you? <laughs> no, <laughs> I hate the treadmill. I have to like have all these mental tricks in order to get me through even like three miles on that thing. So I usually will like listen to music and then I'll be like, okay, after four songs, I can look at how far I've gone or something like that. I'll do the exact same thing. And that's like the only way that I can actually get through it. Yeah. The, uh, actually over this winter, I went out to go do my first 17 miler and I made it about six miles in a blizzard before I was like, forget it. And I ran to the gym and finished the 11 miles on there. And it was actually kind of like gratifying the way that I felt after I had finished it because that's crazy. But there's also someone behind me who had been running before I got there and was still running after I got there. And they were running like super fast. And I'm like, all right. I don't know if I feel that good anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you ran that, you know, you should feel good enough after every, you know, hopefully right. every I run. feel like only runners would feel that way, but. <laughs> right. Um, you had briefly touched on not being injured uh, for this first winter. You underwent a hip, was it a hip surgery a couple of years ago? Yeah, that was in uh, June of 2018. I actually had the surgery. I was injured for probably a whole entire year before I actually had it. Um, it was a labral tear, and it was also combined with a deformity that I had from birth. So nothing would have happened if I wasn't a runner, but I became a runner, and then it got all aggravated in there. And So the cartilage tore. Um, it was... I want to say I was on crutches for about four weeks and then I was not allowed to run for about three months. And then I guess, yeah, road to recovery. If you couldn't run or do anything. It was. Yeah. So I tried, I tried to push myself all the time and I know they tell you, you know, like chill out, you know, if you want to be able to run again, you gotta just relax. So I went to physical therapy and they were, runners as well so that really helped me out but I went for all three of my months and then they told me I could start doing like one minute on one minute off and from there uh, I actually got IT band syndrome because I decided I didn't feel like doing that so I would go out and like run a mile run two miles and I dealt with IT band syndrome for about six months before I got that one figured out so that yeah it uh, yeah i feel like every runner has their little bout of it band syndrome yeah exactly exactly um when you were um when you were were recovering was there any like sort of like stretch or workout that you were doing that proved really beneficial to where you are now yeah so i actually still do some of the workouts like to this day Usually once a week, I'll incorporate them into like my leg day. Um, anything that has a resistance band is going to help a lot for anything like related to my hip as well as the IT band syndrome. Both of the like recovery methods were kind of the same. They kind of work the same area, but like clamshells and lateral leg raises and things like that are still things that I do all the time to strengthen all those muscles. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Do you stretch daily too? Um, when my training is more intense, I do stretch pretty much every day. Um, right now it's just kind of, I'm going out 
doing whatever feels good. So I stretch about three days a week, and then I do leg day three days or three days a week. I do it one day a week. And then I do, um, like, the lighter exercises one day a week. Okay. Um, do you have, like, is there a favorite, um, like, leg strengthening workout that you prefer the most? Um, anything anything that's going to be, like, one-legged has helped me the most. So, like, pistol squats, I'm, like, working on actually being able to do them. I'm doing, like, modified pistol squats right now. And then um, lateral lunges, things like that, like, um, I really like reverse lunges because they kind of target the hamstrings and like things that don't really get targeted in your regular like squats and things like that. So I really push for people to make sure they're doing like one legged exercises because running like you always have like one foot on the ground at a time. So you have to make sure that they can handle the impact. Great tip. That's a really great tip. Um, you had mentioned your trail shoes that you use for snow. Uh, no, we're, you know, there's no snow to, I mean, knock on wood, we're not going to get snow. It's 2020, anything can happen. But right. what, uh, you're a Brooks, you're on the Brooks Run Happy, like, squat. Mm -hmm. So, I guess, which kind of Brooks do you love the most? Um, for trail shoes, I like the Cascadia. I was recently just given the Catamount, which I haven't used yet, but I'm very excited to try them out. They just came out. But the Cascadia I really like because they are, like, super firm on the bottom. So they're pretty much good for, like, baby trails to the hardcore trails. And uh, I've taken them running and I've taken them hiking, and they've done me really well for, like, both scenarios. And then otherwise, I'm really into the glycerin, which is what I use for most of my runs. And then, like, for my speed workouts or my shorter runs, I'll use the launch. Do you just instantly fall in love with Brooks how did you were you like oh, I'm gonna go from ASICS New Balance Nike and then um, you have Brooks. I ran in Nike for like the first six years of my running career and it was the same pair of shoes so um you could probably tell where that went and why I had IT band syndrome and all that but um I was actually fitted for shoes twice at uh my local fleet feet and they were both Brooks and they were both two different kinds of Brooks, and I re really liked both of them. And so I figured, you know, I'd like check out what else they have. And I saw they have like a shoe finder, so I would plug my stuff in there. And it was the shoes that I was wearing, so I'm like, wow, like everything kind of makes sense. But uh, the thing that I liked most about Brooks is that they have something for everyone. And like, I appreciate all shoe brands, and like, I know that different shoes work for different people. And I highly recommend like making sure you try all the different brands if you're just starting out to see what you like. But Brooks has been like the most versatile, having like elite shoes to your everyday shoes to super cushioned to low cushioned to structured to not structured. So yeah, and I think yeah, Fleet Feet they do a great job of like making sure their employees are well knowledge. Yeah, I, actually, I worked there for about five months before I graduated from college. So um, I, I really appreciate like how much education that they give to all their employees and everything. Did you have any like crazy experience fitting someone for a shoe? Um, I had a lot of crazy experiences fitting people for shoes. Um, people who like don't believe in what you have to say about shoes and, you know, thinking that they need a certain shoe, but that's not really what you see. And you know, bringing them back because they bought the shoes that they wanted and not the shoes that you fit them for, things like that. What is the first thing that you're looking for when you're, you know, wanting to get a new pair? Um, for me personally, it's just the cushion level. I've learned what I've liked after owning like six different styles of the Brooks. So um, that's mainly what I'm looking for because the longer I'm out there on my feet where my runs are aiming towards like three hours, I'm going to want to have I, I like like mid-level cushion shoes, something that has a little bit of like bounce to it, but that's usually what I look for first. And then I'll look at like how much structure does it have and just like what are the other components to the shoe. How many, uh, how many miles do you like to put in before you're retiring a pair? About 400. Okay. And do you have a couple of different pairs or you're just like, I'm going to stick with this one and and ride it out to the 400 or are you rotating 
prepare for your longer runs, prepare for your shorter runs. Yeah. So I rotate three pairs of shoes right now. Um, it, I think it makes them last longer too. I'm able to like push them past the 400 because just like our bodies, shoes need to recover as well. So if you go and run 10 miles in a pair of shoes, the next day it's not going to feel the same because it still hasn't gotten like its bounce back and all that. So I try to switch between um, – I have like a firmer shoe that I'll use for like long, slow runs. And then my cushier shoe I use for like longer, faster runs. And then I have a very minimal cushion shoe that I use for those shorter, speedier runs. Are you, how do you, um, I don't know, what's the best way to like encourage people about like running with multiple pairs of shoes? Just educating them on the benefits of having different shoes. Um, like I said, shoes need to recover, but shoes also have like different purposes and they target different muscles depending on the amount of cushion that's in there. So sometimes they can put more emphasis on the calves and some of them can put more emphasis on the quads and it just all kind of depends on the cushion level of the shoe and how you run. But I think that everybody should have at least two pairs of shoes if they're going to be getting up in those 25, 30, 35 mile weeks. Great. I think that's a great tip right there. Um, we can find you. You were you're really involved with your like your running group. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can you give us a name and like kind of how you stumbled upon them? So uh, my run group is Run with the Winners, and we meet every Wednesday and Saturday. And they found me on Instagram and would not stop commenting on my pictures saying please come run with us <laughs> so I was super nervous at the time because I had never run with anybody there was nobody in my life who runs and I didn't want to like be judged for my paces and all that but I was like after the like 20th comment I'm like okay I'll try <laughs> so I went and they ended up being the most incredible people that I have ever met like always giving back to the community we are always working towards like something we can do like donations or charity or um, we did the run for change when um, we started bringing out the black lives matter issues um, for every mile we donated a dollar. And I think we raised about $15,000 through all of that. So yeah, they're incredible. I actually, um, there's a couple of people in the group that I'll just run with like, on whatever days so a lot of us run together like three to five days a week anyway you got and then you meet at fleet feet or are you guys like we're going to meet at this park or this location on the day pre-covid we met in uh, ohio city which is a little neighborhood in cleveland and we would all just do like a predetermined loop there uh, ever since then, we kind of have decided to change things up and make the group more available to everyone in the greater Cleveland area. So two times a month, we'll be on the west side and two times a month, we'll be on the east side. And we're just kind of like learning more about good places to run in the area and also getting more people to join and see what running with the group is all about. Before that, were you just one, and, you know, I just want to run by myself? That yes. kind of I was always like, nope, I'm, I'm going to go run this 14 miles by myself because I want it to be the way I want it. And now I'm like, who's running the 14 miles with me because I can't do this alone. <laughs> <laughs> and then are you just conversating with that person or those people the entire time? So there's, there's some people who I will talk to for like the entire time, but there's some people where what we're both looking for is just someone to like experience the run with. So we might just listen to our music and run next to each other and, and then talk about it afterwards. What are you uh, normally listening to? Are you a podcast girl or are you just like, ah, oh, give me my like EDM kind of music? Um, I tried the podcast life, but it just didn't work out for me. Maybe I haven't found the right one, but um I'm usually listening to, like, if it's a speed run, I will make a playlist for it. Like, what what vibe do I need right now? But most of the time, it's, like, early 2000s hip-hop or, like, rock and metal. Just depends on, like, what kind of run it's going to be. Early 2000s hip-hop is the best kind of hip-hop. <laughs> oh, I know. Like, doesn't get better than that. No. Um... 
I know, you know, this year in terms of like races, was there a race that was you were had signed up for that got canceled and have you like maybe replaced that goal with something maybe hopefully you can get in at the end of the year? So um, I was supposed to do Glass City Marathon in Toledo and it was going to be my first full marathon. It was canceled probably four weeks before it was supposed to happen, but I saw it coming, so I wasn't too crushed about it. Um, I changed the goal to Richmond Marathon in Virginia, which is in November. It's still happening as of right now, but I also don't expect that to happen. So if worst comes to worst, I am deferred to April 2021 for Glass City. Okay, a little bit just more extra time to prep for the marathon. Yep. I am not in any rush to run 26.2 miles. So whenever whenever it's meant to happen, it'll happen. How were you feeling uh, like the four weeks beforehand? Were you mentally ready? I was ready. I was absolutely the most ready I had ever been. I trained or attempted to train for a marathon three times and I got injured each time. And I took the time to educate myself, become stronger and learn a lot more about recovery and how much goes into that and i was ready but there we go round four didn't work out either so well, my fiance says that uh the richmond marathon is like phenomenal so That's what i've heard so. yep i've heard yeah i've heard some really good things about it so it, it'd be one that i would i'd run i did mm -hmm. a i was doing a half marathon in every state a few years back and um, at the time, too, I was also, like, looking at marathons and where I could run. And, yeah, Richmond was, like, it kept popping up on everybody's. So. And you really don't think it either. Like, like, it's just not one that pops into mind. But I saw it also on, like, some of the United States Best Marathons. And there's also a group of us who wanted to meet up and do it together. So that was another thing that kind of pushed me towards signing up for that. Uh, when you're running, you know, if you've got running tech, we've, we've talked about Brooks and shoes, you know, anything with like headphones or your watch, anything special in regards to that, that, you know, hey, like you saw that was super cool that somebody had that was kind of rare and now that you own. Yes, I have aftershocks for my headphones. Um, I have like the water resistant ones because it rains so much here. Um, and I've had no issues with them. They have like a six hour battery life. So those are what I use. And like if I'm on the treadmill, I'll just bring AirPods or whatever, nothing special. And then um, I actually just bought a camera and got it yesterday. And it's about this big. And it's kind of the same idea as a GoPro, but it's a lot smaller. And you can also use a magnet to attach it to your shirt or your hat or wear it as a necklace. And it has motion stability. So I'm extremely excited for the content that this is about to bring me. Wow. Yeah. You're going to have to send me that link. That's pretty awesome. Yep. It's What's called that? the Insta360. Okay. Cool. I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to check that out. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Grant's fun, fun running videos with that. And if you go to any cool sites to run. Exactly. Yep couple things I like to ask people just kind of like you know some deep thought questions what have you learned about yourself you know through your running and fitness journey that I am way stronger than I ever thought I was I have gained so much confidence between running and running with a group and all the people that I've met and I kind of learned that like life does not have to be anything difficult and even when you're having difficult times you just learn how to do those things that you enjoy and you know just like you just gotta live that's that's some of the biggest things that I've learned just through like running and what running's brought me and then uh and finally I guess advice for you know the high school runner who hates running <laughs> and yeah. you know doesn't really find the joy in it that you know what we do now being older um, I say stick with it. I say find your group and find what you like about running and what you don't like about running and then make changes from there. I know people hate track workouts, so I make them fun. I mean, running doesn't have to be anything difficult and it doesn't have to be something that you feel like you have to do. It just, it's something that makes people feel good 
feel healthy, and it gives you, you know, something to be passionate about. Thank you again, Megan, for chatting with me. And if you'd like to give Megan a follow or if there was something interesting that we had talked about, scroll down in the episode notes below. Remember, make each day your own masterpiece. Don't limit yourself. And every day is a good day to run. I'll see you out on the road.